Good day, everyone. My name is Raymond Chow Ing Hong. My student metric number is 159735. I'm a first year computer science student from USM. This video is for CPT 112 Discrete Structure Assignment 2. In this video, I'll be talking about application of recurrence relations. So, what is recurrence relations? A recurrence relation is an equation that defines a sequence based on a rule that gives the next terms as a function of the previous terms. Let's see an example. Let a n be a sequence that satisfies the recurrence relation a n equals to a n minus 1 plus 10 for n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and suppose that a0 equal to 0 what are a1, a2 and a3? In this question, the initial condition is a0 equal to 0. Based on the equation a n equals to a n minus 1 plus 10, we can find the a1. a1 is equal to a0 plus 1 which is 0 plus 10 and the answer is 10. And then what is a2? a2 is equal to a1 plus 1 which is 10 plus 10 and the answer is 20. What is a3? a3 is equal to a2 plus 1 which is 20 plus 10 and the answer is 30. Now, we will talk about Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. As an example, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. From this series, we can see that the first term add up the second term to become the third term. 1 plus 1 equals to 2. The second term add up the third term to become the fourth term. 1 plus 2 equals to the 3, and so on. Let's see an example. What are F2, F3, F4, F5, and F6 when the recursive relation is Fn equals to Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2 and the initial conditions are F0 equals to 0 and F1 equals to 1. From the question, we can know that F0 equals to 0 while F1 equals to 1. Also, from the recursive relation, we also can know that F2 equals to F1 plus F0, which is 1 plus 0, and the answer is 1. F3 equals to F2 plus F1, which is 1 plus 1, and the answer is 2. F4 equals to F3 plus F2, which is 2 plus 1, and the answer is 3. F5 equals to F4 plus F3, which is 2, 3 plus 2, and the answer is 5. Lastly, F6 equals to F5 plus F4, which is 5 plus 3, and the answer is 8. Do you know how to solve a recurrence relation? If you don't know, I'm going to talk about this in a few more seconds. We can solve the recurrence relations by finding the closed formula. Closed formula is a formula for the n term of the sequence generated by a recurrence relation. As an example, let a n be a sequence that satisfies the recurrence relation a n equals to a n minus 1 plus 10 for n equals to 2, 3, 4 and so on. And suppose that a1 equals to 10. From the question, we can know that a1 equals to 10. We also can know that from the recurrence relation, a2 equals to a1 plus 10, which is 10 plus 10. And we also can write it as 10 times 2. We use the same method to find a3 and a4. From there, we also can know that a n equals to a n minus 1 plus 10. We also can write it as 10 times n minus 1 plus 10. And we can write it as 10n. That's it. That's how we can find the closed formula.
and now I will show one example of financial application. Suppose that a person deposit $1,000 in a saving account every year at the bank, yielding 11% per year with interest compound annually. How much will there be in the account after 30 years? In this question, we have to take note that the person will deposit $1,000 in the account every year. That means he will deposit $1,000 in the first year and the second year, he will continue to deposit $1,000 until the year 30. Let P1 equals to the amount of money in the bank account and P0 equals to the $1,000. From the question, we can know that P1 equals to P0 plus 0.11 P0 and then we can simplify it to become 1.11 P0. To find P2, we need to find total amount of money in the bank account in the year 1 which is P1 plus P0 which is the $1,000 that we deposit at year 2. After finding that, we also need to add it to the amount of interest generated by the amount of money by the bank, which is P1 plus P0 times 0 0.11. And then from P1, we know that P1 equals to 1.11 P0. So we substitute 1.11 P0 into P1. We take out 1.11 P0 plus P0 out from the equation, and then we simplify it. And then we will see bracket 1.11 square plus 1.11 bracket times P0 which is what you all see at the bottom. To find P3, we need P2 plus P0 and the amount of interest generated by P2 plus P0 which is what you see on the top. And then we take out the P2 plus P0. Previously, we know that P2 equals to bracket 1.11 square plus 1.11 bracket times P0. We substitute this into the P2 and then we will get what you all see on the third line. After that, we will simplify it until we get bracket 1.11 cube plus 1.11 square plus 1.11 bracket P0 which is what you all see on the bottom. Also, we can see that there is a pattern and this pattern will help us to find Pn. From the pattern, we can know that Pn equals to bracket 1.11 power n plus and so on until plus 1.11 power square plus 1.11 bracket times P0. What's inside the bracket is sum of geometry progression. We can see that A equals to 1.11, R equals to 1.11. After substitute the value of A and R into the formula of sum of GP, we will get Tn equals to 1.11 bracket 1.11 power N minus 1 bracket divided by 1.11 minus 1. Content of the bracket can be simplified into Tn. So we will get Pn equals to Tn times P0. After substitute the formula of Tn, we will get the formula to calculate the amount of money after n years. To calculate the total amount of money in the bank after 30 years, we just have to substitute 30 into the n and then we will get the amount. The amount is 220,000. $913.17 That's it for today. Thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.